it's a, it's a real honor um, and that they believed in showing not only paintings, um, but ceramics, which are new work for me. So I've only been working in ceramics for under two years. Um, and so it means a lot that the, the gallery supports that work and the new direction and um, new, new directions for my work. Um, I guess it makes sense to start with uh, the title of the exhibition, which is called For Roslyn. Um, that's a nod to the Western film, The Misfits, which came out in 1961. Um, I started watching a lot of Western movies when I was doing my MFA. Um, I was in New York. Uh, I realized somehow, some way that I wanted to be making paintings about Texas, um, which let's just say I was met with a bit of resistance to uh, up in the big city. And I felt very silly myself. Um, I didn't feel very confident about that idea. Um, luckily, I did have a professor who thought it was, it was something that I might be able to find my way into. And one of his suggestions actually was to watch Western movies. And um, growing up in the Beaumont area, um, whatever I saw of Western movies always felt very, very distant from my idea of Texas of what I'd known. So uh, very much gumbo and gators. Uh, in swamps is my experience of Texas growing up and not the idea of um, West Texas and cowboys and distant spaces with with mountains and endless horizons. Um, so I'd seen like some Clint Eastwood films as a teenager, um, but didn't really, my relationship with Texas um, was a bit fraught, let's say. And uh, living in New York and going to school there didn't make it any easier. So um, The Misfits is a movie I only just watched um, like this year, but it felt like an incredible moment to see the movie um, because of the presence of the character that Marilyn Monroe plays, which is Rosalind. Um, Marilyn Monroe, again, as somebody growing up, uh, female with a, a mother who wasn't from Texas but loved big Texas hair and makeup. Um, Marilyn Monroe always felt like the idea of, of a woman that I felt I could never be. And I, in fact, like had resentment towards her as a sort of icon. And watching that movie um, completely shifted the way I felt about her. And in fact, I felt that she unfairly was the brunt of a lot of things that I think um, people who are female have to deal with, which is ideas of femininity and um, their own body and their presentation. And all of that is a part of the misfits. But then she brings her incredible sense of humor and depth to that role, um, which I think challenges all of that um, and proves that she was a much more uh, interesting person than I think when, again, like I'm 15 and I see a picture of her with her skirt blowing up. Um, you know, she's so much more than that, as all people are. Um, so for Rosalind is a way to acknowledge the role of people in the West, whether that be in film, sort of uh, in novels and stories and mythologies that are not the stories we commonly hear. Um, and when I think of that, I think of like John Wayne as sort of like the ultimate perspective. Um, and so it's a way to acknowledge a female presence um, in, in these stories, um, it references myself as well. Um, and also is a way to link, I think, the paintings to the ceramic work, which the ceramics go into a feminist and very female uh, kind of way. So um, that title for me uh, does a lot of work and uh, bridges the two. Um, I feel like that was, that was a lot. I'm gonna... <laughs> I take a moment here, um, covering some ground really fast. Um, so I'll start with the paintings because I have been a painter. Um, I don't know. I did my MFA. I graduated in 2012, um, and have been an oil painter primarily uh, since then. And my work since then has also dealt with the idea of Texas and the idea of Texas. What is Texas? Each one of us who are from the state have again very different backgrounds, histories. Um, you know, families who have been here for generations. Um, my family, not being from Texas at all, I was the Texan of the family um, and kind of having to deal with that growing up in the Beaumont area. And also the idea of a Texas that I never knew. So whenever I started going to 
other places. Um, my grandparents were in Southern California. I went and did my MFA in New York City and also did my undergraduate degree at Wagner College, which is on Staten Island, which I was tricked into going to because it is the fifth borough of New York City. But if you ever go there, you know it's not really New York City, but I'm from Beaumont. I didn't know. Um, so it was like people had these ideas of who I was when I would say, this is where I'm from. And it got old really fast. And in fact, that started whenever I would go to Southern California. Uh, the once very strong Texas accent that I had uh, was definitely mocked by other children. Flight attendants thought that I sounded so cute. And I, I really started to wonder, what, what are you talking about? You know, this is what everybody sounds like. And um, realize that's not the case. And that, again, the idea of, of Texas that other people carry outside of the state and into international, into other countries, um, especially once George Bush was elected, um, you know, the, the notion of what Texas is and who its people are, um, I felt very limited by and I felt very frustrated by. And so I went into phases of like rejecting this and then to being like the proud Texan. Um, and then starting to realize, like, wait a second, like, what do I even know? Like, what do I even know of some of these books or some of these movies or some of the fashion that people are associating with me? And um, that is when I started uh, reading. And that's when I think, like, there's a nod uh, to the painting over there. There's a little red painting that's square that's titled All the Pretty Horses. Um, which is named after, of course, the Cormac McCarthy novel, because that's where I started. Um, it was like Cormac McCarthy had never read. Well, I need to do that. I need to read Lonesome Dove because I had never done that. So I started going down sort of like the greatest hits of, of films and books um, that defined the idea of Texas. At the same time, I had my background at the Stark Museum of Art. Um, that's where I did one of my, my, was that my first internship? I was their first intern, I can say that. I um, showed up and said, you're like a museum. I was back at home from New York, um, back in Beaumont and looking for a job and uh, they took me on. And I really uh, wasn't proud to be there either at the time. Um, I was young and I wanted to be, you know, in New York City. I, the Menil was like a dream. And there I was at the Stark Museum. And then I started to realize if I'm going to be here again, I need to understand what is it that I'm working with. If I'm going to be learning how to house all of these objects and to organize this collection, I was working with the registrar. Um, I've got to find a way. I've got to find a way to care more than I am. And so I started reading about um, American art history specifically. And then all of a sudden the beard stats became really cool, especially because we had some in storage that um, were plain air, little oil sketches on paper. I saw those, those were amazing. So I started to find these like ways into that collection and um, started to gain respect, especially for for artists who were going out west and um, were painting in these landscapes. And so I came with like that, a bit of that type of art history background from being at the Stark Museum. And again, they were so kind to, because uh, I just said like, oh, I really didn't like being there. It had nothing to do with the people or the institution. It was my own ideas of what the collection was about. Um, and you know, being like 18 and thinking like, I want big abstract expressionist paintings um, as opposed to dudes on horses. Um, and then it turned out I fell in love um, with a lot of the work in that collection. And when I was then doing my MFA, I started to realize that that was a lot of the work that I was sort of carrying with me in the back of my brain. How, do, how does one be inspired by that um, and be younger? and be female um, and be of color um, and knowing that I come with all of that with me and how, how do I make work about this? And being in New York City uh, and trying to stand up there and be, be proud of where I'm from and trying to tell stories that nobody uh, could really relate to. So these paintings, again, wow, like long, that just went like all over um, where I didn't think I was gonna go. Um, the paintings feel like a culmination of all of that coming together. And for me, they kind of feel like probably a closing on some of that, on some of these ideas that I've investigated for a long time. They feel like the coming together of space um, that I, I think of memories of traveling out to West Texas for the first time 
again, in my early 20s, um, or going to Hill Country for the first time. Uh, being in Beaumont, we, we traveled to Houston a couple of times to tell us, but we weren't, my family wasn't going out to all of these places that um, are what we think of that make Texas sort of unique and, and beautiful. A lot of the state parks, that wasn't a part of my, my background. So when I started to do that, I started to see some of these spaces. Um, I was very affected by them. And none of these paintings are done like on site. I used to paint outside. Um, and so that is also something I bring with me. I have great respect for plein air painters. Um, something I would love to do again one day. But I think that that experience of having done that, I, I have that in my mind. Um, in my memory and I'm able to remember the feeling of, of, again, that type of space or how clouds feel or the color of the sky. Um, and I think all of that comes into these paintings even though none of them are, are based on a specific place. They're all my ideas of Texas. Um, and very much, I think the cactuses, which reoccur again and again, um, the cactus I recognize as a sort of um, icon um, of the American West um, and also in a way of Texas, even though they're not everywhere all over the state, again, the idea of Texas, I think that other people carry is the cactus. Um, again, in Beaumont, that was very much not my experience, but it was this idea of a Texas that, that I didn't know. Um, so using the cactus um, as a sort of presence in the landscape, but as an icon, as a sort of stand in for what the American West and Texas can mean. Um, and I think that what I realized in doing some of these paintings with the cactus uh, is that my interest in icons and symbols has really increased. So I would have said um, just a couple of years ago, color would have been a primary interest. I think that's still obviously the case, uh, composition and structure um, and space. But now, um, I would say the idea of what an image can carry, the weight, the meaning um, of what something like a cactus can carry, just as it being recognized as such. And I think that that um, has transitioned into the ceramic work where I'm actually making physical things. I'm getting to make a symbol or an icon, and it's something that takes up space um, and has to be dealt with as such. Um, so I feel like that's a way to sort of bridge the paintings um, into the ceramic sculptures. Um, and I think that's what I find very pleasing about the ceramics. Not only that I have no clue, well, okay, that's not true. I have some broad sense now of what I'm doing in ceramics, but when I started, I really had no idea. I had um, just tried it. I was very lucky that Linus Blanton, um, he had, he's just retired from Lamar University and had been out there for many years and always said, come play with clay. I taught at Lamar for like three, four semesters and I didn't have the time. And then I finally said, you know what? The time in my life is right. I would really love to do this if the offer still stands. And he said, yeah, of course, because as I've learned, clay people are like the nicest people in the world. Um, <laughs> painters, no, no, <laughs> we don't need another one of you. There's too many. <laughs> like, but clay people are like, yes, join us. Like, we need more. Um, it's a little culty. No. Um, so, so I went to work with Linus, and and it really, I had never touched clay. I didn't do that during my graduate studies. It's just painting, just painting. If I can be good at painting, that'll be enough for me. Um, and and it was it was an amazing experience. It was amazing to feel like I didn't know and to enjoy that and to relish in that, to be able to ask questions, to be a student again, and to sort of not have the weight of painting, painting history especially, which um, I feel very keenly, I guess. Um, I love art history. I love going to museums. Um, I love looking at, at, yeah, all of art history. But when it comes to ceramics, it's like, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and, and I love that. I say that with a full love and appreciation for the people um, who have invited me in and have let me ask the dumbest questions and have just said, I'll help you. And that's the people at Third Coast Clay. I should probably mention them. I meant to mention them at the beginning. Um, and Lotus, who runs it, and Jerry, who's one of my teachers. And these the sculptures are definitely not possible um, without them being there and the type of community and their willingness to say, come on board. Whereas, again, I think 
other other arts crowds wouldn't be so so kind. Um, and so that that also feels like a bit of a shift. The paintings are very much about my own experiences, paintings that I've made in the past that I was like, I think I have this the the ability to make these paintings even stronger and these memories. Um, but the ceramics feel like a new place where uh, community has become very important to me, um, support of other people, and even the, the birth of the idea itself. Uh, yeah, Sran, yeah, you're right there. Um, so here at Fultz, um, I was in the Emerging show. I was like, that's two years ago. I was about to say last year, but that's not true. Um, I was here and in conversation with Liz and Saran, and we were just talking about, I think, Western wear and cowboy stuff. I don't even know. And Saran points out that, like, cowboy hats kind of have the suggestive crease on the top. I'm, I'm beating around a little bit. And I was like, oh, my God, you're so right. I'm going to make that. And then she was like, yeah, you should make that. And I was like, no, I'm really going to make that. Like, I'm really taking this idea. She's like, no, you should really, really do it. So even, even that, the fact that it was like the trust in the conversation um, and then going to a place like Third Close Clay and starting to make them and being like, what are these people going to think? They don't know me. And these hats are getting a little suggestive. Um, and instead, so people just loved it. And people have been supportive even when they've been caught off guard. Um, and so that, that feels like a very, very different way of, of making, um, which is very different to the paintings, which are very much my own imagination. Um, and reflection on, on kind of the past, whereas I guess in a way the, the ceramic hats feel like moving in to new territory and uh, a new way of making and, and a future. Um, so there will be more. Um, I don't know, is there any, I, I, I just, again, I just went all the way around places I didn't know I was going. Um, <laughs> like what, oh my God, talked about the paintings. I could talk about the tumbleweeds. Usually, if you haven't been here before, the the sculptures were placed in the middle of the room just in terms of the installation, and um, the tumbleweeds were hanging above, and it felt like a way to, again, bring in a, a kind of symbol of the American West and of Texas, um, something that people associate with the state, and something that I remember where I was the first time I ever saw one rolling across the street. Um, I think I was driving through Claude, Texas when I was 17, um, 16, with a family going to Colorado, and I couldn't believe they were real because I felt like they only showed up in cartoons. Um, and so having them in the space, which Sarah brought back for me, which is really amazing. I asked for one. She brought back like a car load. Um, again, the support that has made this show possible. So hopefully other things will come from these. Um, but they also feel like, again, this, this evoking the idea of, of what is Texas um, and getting to bring that into the gallery is also very fun. Um, hmm. Well, it's really <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Serena specifically on any of her work or background? Can you talk a little bit the sense of motion, I guess, or um, transition within your work? And I know when I was reading a bit before about like Moy Bridge, it was like, uh, unless I'm making that up. No, no, uh, I feel very touched. Um, like you're reading, you're reading about me. That's so kind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, when I was, I still haven't finished the book, doing some reading um, about the American West very generally, I was suggested a book that actually talked about the overlap of Edward Moybridge and what was happening in the American West. And it's, it's pretty incredible um, the way technology made a lot of westward expansionism possible and um, sped up the whole process. And Moybridge's photos, I think, to a lot of artists, I found out, are, are very inspiring. I don't know if it's 
seeing the same thing again and again as we look around the room as the cactus again and again and again. Um, and being able to see that image slightly different, um, but especially seeing the horses um, got me thinking about how, like, what are the limitations of painting and what can painting do? And painting is not usually where a person goes to try to represent motion in any way. Um, but whenever I feel like that happens, when I feel like I see it in a painting that something's very fast and there, the suggestion of speed exists, so you see a mark and you see it's going shoo, um, that's very exciting to me. That's a very exciting way to use paint. Um, and Moybridge seemed to suggest a way where that could be possible. So instead of feeling like the painting had to be something um, very still, which by its nature it is, I thought, is there a way to capture that? And through the repetition of the same shape or form, um, can I suggest motion? And can I blur the paint to suggest motion? Um, and so in the, the little red boots, I think little red shoes painting, which alludes to a Loretta Lynn song, um, that's what's going on. Um, and this relief tucked in the corner doesn't quite do that. So there's like a lot of horse legs. Instead, it kind of looks like a horse that might be more of like an octopus. Um, but that idea of all of those legs suggesting um, the running, the movement of the horse. Um, and that, that relief is actually titled for Rosalind um, because if you've seen The Misfits, um, I'm hoping you're gonna watch it if you haven't seen it, so I won't say, but um, I'll just say that the freedom of wild horses is a very important element to the movie. And so it's my sort of fantasy of um, this female figure riding on this horse in motion, lots of freedom um, and the ability to move without restraint. Um, and I think that that's interesting again to conflict with a relief, which is something that's considered very stable um, by nature. So I think trying to destabilize mediums um, that are not effective for showing motion, um, obviously film would be best or a performance or something. Um, that's, that's a very interesting idea to me. And I have the idea to do like big, like lots of boots and like big dust cloud and stuff, but um, that, that hasn't happened yet. So I appreciate that question because I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is uh, exciting, exciting stuff. Um, I think it's fascinating that, that you can look at painting sometimes and say, or try to guess is, you know, does that feel fast? Does that feel slow? Um, and, and my paintings normally, I don't think have that quality, but that starts to have that type of swoosh. Um, and I like to think that way when I'm painting as well. Like, what does that mark sound like? It's just swoosh is a little dot. Um, somebody taught me that once that, that you could listen to paintings. And I think that that's a really profound idea. Like how much paint, right? Is it like squishy paint? So you can hear like the smooshing of it. Is it staccato? Um, and I always tried to get when I taught students not to listen to music, which is impossible. Um, they will hate you. Um, I learned that like that's the way to get students to hate you is to say no music in class. But the idea was that you would listen to your own mark and you would listen to like, are you doing the same thing like again and again and again? Doesn't that even sound boring? Maybe it even looks boring. Like maybe you need to vary that a little bit. You know, um, maybe it is time to come in and do like a big wipe or something like that. And how does like a tiny pencil sound as opposed to wiping everything clean? And I think that that's, uh, that's a pretty fun concept. So maybe that's like, but Moybridge doesn't do that. I just see that, I just see the beginning of, of film. And, um, and that's, I think that's very exciting to try to imagine a place where art was there, where film was there, which we can't comprehend because we're just so used to it all being accessible to us. But this, this moment, right as movement is about to be captured and seeing that like really caught there still, um, I think it's a pretty incredible moment in, in, in time. Who are those birds? Yeah. 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 Like one comment I'd like to say, I, as someone whose background is art history and specifically uh, looking at earlier 20th century Texas regionalism, Lone Star regionalism into modernism, I think that was probably one of the first things that struck me about your work was that some of the imagery, some of the work, subject matter, um, immediately evoked Texas regionalists, and I don't mean that as a bad word, that was a, a great word, especially in the 30s and 40s, 
um, you know, looking for the universal in the local, in around us, in, in the state, and you know, grappling with these ideas of what what is Texas, what's Texas art, and then today to see your work and coming from a female perspective. Um, where there's so much, I, I just see you know, so much laid in, looking at the past, looking at the present, grappling with you know ideas of reality versus mythology versus experience, and um, I think it's a really fresh, interesting, interesting body of work that we look forward to continuing to follow, especially with the ceramic, seeing where they continue to develop. Um, but, you know, as opposed to so many artists, and you know, there's so few female artists working in that regionalist aesthetic back in the 30s and 40s, so to have this flash forward, you know, 90 years later, and to have this female perspective, I think is really, really fascinating. Um, for, for me, just to <laughs> Are there any other questions? If not, then I would say thank you all for being here. Let's all give a round of applause to Serena. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Any other questions, she will be here. Billy Castle, who is also here with us this afternoon. Um, so please have a drink, have a cookie. There's Billy. Um, if you have any questions for him, um, please seek both of them out. And enjoy. Glad you're here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all.